Welcome back, everybody. Behind the Scenes, Episode 6. It's been a while since we did one of these videos. It feels like there's a lot to talk about. At least that's a convenient thing to say because it has been six months. But in reality, I wanted to do a different upload today. I wanted to do a video on my gaming quirks, Part 2. I only had nine points brainstormed, and I felt like the video was going to lack some substance. So I'm just going to shelf that for now. I can maybe revisit that another time as that list continues to grow. I was still insistent on trying to get a video out today because I've wanted to be consistent with these uploads. And at the start of the year, I did such a great job with that. Three uploads per month. It felt like there was always something coming out of the channel. At least I hope you got a sense that there was always something coming. Obviously that slowed down, what, two or three months ago, something like that. And the reasons for that are fairly simple. Work, you know, having to maintain a social and family life every now and then, <laughs> and uh, a different video game that kind of captivated me called Dota 2. Yeah, I got back into that. I was obsessed again. And uh, the more obsessed that I was with Dota, the less that I wanted to do with other video games in general, because it was eating up so much of my free time that I basically needed a detox when I wasn't playing the game and just spend my time doing anything else. I was on my non-Legend of Leo YouTube channel getting recommendations about sports and maths and cosmology and news and whatever else, just nothing video games. I had to turn my brain off from gaming when I wasn't playing Dota. Anyways, I'm back now, and uh, perhaps Dota will make some appearances in video form later on this year. We'll see. Let's uh, get into the actual behind-the-scenes production stuff, more of the channel videos and the roadmap. And then to make this video a little more interesting, oh, I think the camera shifted, I am going to talk about some fairly current and trendy video game topics. Little things that I've seen pop up every now and then in the titles of different YouTube videos and also on Twitter, but that I've largely ignored. Now, a lot of these topics that I'm going to get into, or at least some of them, I've thought of different videos that I could make on them, or at least related to them, but I wanted to approach these from completely different angles. So today, it's going to be a little more, what, gossipy? That's not the right word, but everything uh, more cursory and the opinions just flowing from the top. Nothing research heavy, because I haven't had time to do any of that. All right, so the videos and the roadmap and all of that. You saw that I started a couple of video series this year. Those will continue. Uh, in my behind the scenes episode five live stream, I actually laid out a lot of the videos that I wanted to do with you guys. So I wanted to do five great co-op games and five uh, obscure or weird games that I've played. And those ideas are still there, they're still cooking, but I haven't given them enough time and attention to make them quality. Some other video ideas about my favorite X, Y, and Z, which I don't have to spoil right now. It's a lot of the same issue where I haven't spent enough time revisiting those games to capture footage or at least uh, sitting down with the ideas in mind and really fleshing them out on pen and paper. Some other ideas like what we're going to get into with the topics coming up. They are research intensive, and the last research intensive video I did was the Modern Gaming Experience Part 2, I believe. That one ran on and on and on for over an hour, right? Yeah, that was way too long. Uh, but there were some ideas that came from that video. For example, looking at what makes a video game release successful, and there's so many interesting things that you can look at for that. You can isolate success or define it depending on the size of the studio and their budget. Is it a AAA studio with millions of dollars in their pockets? Well, how many video game sales defines a success for them? Look at the release window, look at their lifetime sales. How does that change if you're an indie developer? Did you have to quit your job to focus on making a game for the last eight years of your life? Was there overhead? Was there not? So that's a video that probably I'm only going to be able to capture a small slice of the subject matter in whatever video I make. But like I said, I want to do those kinds of things justice and they require research and I haven't been in the mood for those research projects. I think a couple of them are coming for the rest of the year. That's kind of what I'm here to assure you about and to give you some insight on what's to come. Uh, I believe... I alluded to wanting to perhaps do something with Dota. And you know what? I have a note here that I was going to bring up at the end of the video. 
But this idea of one-off videos and game-specific videos, which my channel is not necessarily known for, usually the one-off subjects, I'm able to categorize them as food for thought. I'm able to make them centered around a discussion-oriented topic. Uh, but there's so many interesting things on YouTube and so many interesting things in the games that I play and my favorite games that sometimes I'm really curious about making a video on them. For example, uh, there's a Pokemon channel called Droomish, and this guy, sometimes the videos are informative and sometimes they're purely fictional and entertaining. Uh, he's looked at that little plot of land in Cerulean, no, not Cerulean, it's Misty's town. I feel like I got to get this right in front of camera. <laughs> the town where Surge is. Cinnabar, oh my God. It's not Cinnabar, that's Blaine's town. Vermilion, yes. So that plot of land in Vermilion, in red, blue, and yellow, where the matchup is going around stomping down the land, he did a fun little exploratory video on what that land could possibly be for and linking the story of that development across the different games and the generations. But then there's also really cool videos on the channel and more informative videos, and I suppose educational, about numbers behind some Pokemon appearances and wild encounters and things like that. Anyways, this is a really long-winded way of saying I have considered doing deep dives into very specific and sometimes peculiar topics in individual games. But it's always felt like, well, where do these one-off videos really fit in my channel? Maybe I just do them and I just upload them and I deal with how they fit later. I mean, I've already shown that my channel is very much a variety space anyways. I don't focus on JRPGs or action games or strategy games. I talk about puzzle games quite a bit, but that's about it. So we'll see. Uh, you know what? On that note also, I'd be so curious to hear some of your favorite channels that maybe have this more abstract way of looking at games. Uh, I know so many of them exist. A lot of the times, though, the videos end up being more silly than fruitful, and I don't find those are always worth watching. I don't really have the time for stuff like that. But some of the videos that do deeper dives into the numbers and the mechanics, and you end up getting a little bit of trivia as well as some interesting information, those I really like. So if you have any channels like that for some of your favorite games, or even just videos, not channels, Go ahead and link those in the comments, share them. I'd be interested in checking those out. All right, do I want to cover anything else from the road map uh, with some future video ideas? Anything else that I want to share with you guys? Not anything right now. I can't think of it while the camera is rolling. Maybe I'll come back to this. Let's move on to the popular content and the trendy topics. And so, Terry, this is where I'm doing my best compromise to have some discussion uh, oriented subjects here without making full-length videos on them. The first one is another question for you. How much time do you spend gaming versus watching gaming content? As I was busy being obsessed and playing Dota, actually, it was much more than just playing the game. I was really getting into the game's uh, strategies and basically treating it like the chess of video games. And I don't want it to sound pretentious, but it's just kind of the appreciation I have for Dota 2 and the level of competition that I approach the game with. I think I've said it now numerous times on the channel. Once upon a time, I was flirting with the idea of going pro in the game. And so I did climb to a relatively high level where it wasn't, you know, out of the realm of possibility. I perhaps could have done it. Even as I find myself playing the game casually, I can't escape the feeling of just wanting to take the game more seriously. So... Anyways, how much time do you guys spend gaming versus watching gaming content? And this is because I basically had to shut off watching gaming content to do other stuff, to have time for other stuff. And that includes gaming. I hope that my audience mostly plays games more than watches gaming content. I find that this is a trap that obviously all social media is known for and other internet forums and anywhere you can spend your time you end up just kind of being surrounded and spending your time basically in this pool 
of all the thing that you like, but you're not actually swimming. You're just sitting in the pool. You're sitting in the shallow end and you're just enjoying relaxing there with everything else going on around you. I don't know. I feel like if I get in the water, I want to swim. I don't just want to sit there. And it's a little bit of the same with content on YouTube versus actually booting up a game and playing it. It doesn't hurt that I've got this channel. And so I have some motivation and a little bit of a fire under me to keep on playing games. Anyways, that's enough on that point. Let's just move on. Oh, wait. And I was going to say this is one of the traps with JRPG channels where you can just spend all day long watching top 10 JRPGs for this, top 10 JRPGs for that. People have ways of categorizing these JRPGs like you would never think of doing uh, a particular subset of JRPGs that are also only available on the 3DS, for example. But those videos exist en masse. So it's nice sometimes to just be able to ignore those and play games. All right, now let's get into some of the more serious topics. These are things that people have gotten really fired up about on social media. Aside from occasionally launching Twitter so I can see some goal recaps and things like that about different sports, soccer, hockey, whatever, and you get a little taste of what people are saying about your favorite team, uh, I really don't use social media. I'll have my Legend of Leo account logged in so that I can occasionally promote my videos on there, but I don't even do that for every video. But anyways, every now and then, though, I see these different trends and trending topics for gaming. And so I've just kind of made a mental note of those. And here are a couple of them. Industry layoffs. Yeah, this was really getting a lot of people mad and upset, uh, what, three or four months ago? I mean, look, to me... This may sound a little bit brash and coarse and insensitive, but I find that these AAA companies are just bloated with a lot of unnecessary staff. They've had their reasons for overhiring. I think it's a fact that they have overhired. And so these layoffs are in some ways a consequence of that. I'm not going to say they're 100% a consequence of just bloat, uh, but not every gaming company has been able to be profitable in the last few years. And look, Every year, whether you're profitable or not, restructuring happens in some way, shape, or form. It's not always financial restructuring, which usually comes with the cost of layoffs, but it could be other restructuring of departments, and maybe you have a senior manager decide to go somewhere else or just quit there at the end of the career, and you have to change the shape and the complexion of that particular department. Anyways, I also don't want to sound like an apologist for these big companies. The fact is, I tend to dislike more of them than like them. But just a lot of the discourse I saw about the industry and all these layoffs, it was heavily sympathetic towards the individuals who may or may not have pulled their own weight within their companies. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just saying what comes to mind, right? I'm just saying a lot of things without having done research, take what I say with a grain of salt, but I think it's generally true for a lot of industries and not just the gaming corporation or the gaming space. Next point that I saw trending, Square Enix. Oh yeah, and sensationalized news. A lot of people really wanted to jump on this one for both reasons. There were two camps in this little Square Enix story. And I believe to summarize, The story was that Square Enix would be having to, again, watch how it manages its money and perhaps close a lot of projects because some of its recent big releases were unsuccessful. Now, again, what is unsuccessful and what is successful? That is something that I'm going to probe at some point in a future video. You know, Final Fantasy 16, when I looked at it with one of my videos at at the beginning of the year, with innovations in gaming, I think we saw that Final Fantasy 16 at the time, as a PlayStation 5 exclusive, only had 3 million sales. Now, if that is unsuccessful, then it might start to give you some ideas of how expensive these games are to make. And maybe these companies need to lay off some of the hyper-realism. This is what also boggles my mind about a lot of the realism in video games. The graphics can be outstanding. High fidelity, really crisp and really clean and really smooth, but they're never actually going to look like real people unless maybe we get there with VR or something. Okay, I'm not going to say never, right? But you know what I mean. Right now, they don't. I don't care. Show me the best looking game on the market right now. I can still tell it's a video game. 
And so when these companies go to lengths like expensive motion capture and really big art uh, sectors, uh, art uh, departments, you just have to ask why. Why are you so focused on making the game look that particular way when there's about a million different tells within an hour of gameplay that shows you that it's a video game? How about the foliage? How about the different plants and the grasses that your character is going to be running through and the way that the shadows bend and move or the way some of the lighting is baked and some of the lighting is not baked? Just all these little things make it very evident that you're playing a video game. So why the obsession with pushing graphics to their utmost limits? Anyways, that's something that I could go on and on about, but I don't have a lot of points prepared to talk about that. I say sensationalized news with Square Enix and their lack of success because it's only a matter of time before more articles come out and you're going to see a lot of success heading towards Square Enix. Oh yeah, Final Fantasy VII Part Two. That was another one that people were talking about, the remake Part Two, that it didn't sell as well as people had expected within the company. It's going to get released on PC. It's going to sell a lot over there. Maybe it's not going to sell a lot as as many as part one, but I don't even know why people would be surprised by that. It's part two in a series of games that you're expected to play part one of. You never see the games get more popular as their sequels are released. There's always a trickle down from a lot of that initial fan base kind of just moving on to different things or losing interest. That's just how it works. All right, next thing here we can move on. Oh, I had a little uh, sub point here to talk about uh, Square Enix just one more time. And uh, I guess, you know, I find it hard to feel bad for a company like Square Enix. One, because I know they'll bounce back. But two, also because much of their success over the years has been through the forms of rehashes and re-releases and things of that nature. Uh, really it is my assuredness that they're not going to go anywhere that doesn't make me panic for them and doesn't make me feel sad like oh no this childhood favorite company of mine isn't going to do too well anymore what's going to happen to their future their future is fine but yeah when you actually compare them to companies like nintendo and to people like todd howard re-releasing skyrim over and over i don't know they're part of the unholy trinity of game companies or game developers if you ask me how many times has square just released final fantasy in a million different forms so that's just a side note that i'm not going to expand upon again clearly with all these different things we're going to talk about i'm not going to get too in depth about any of these conversations but if you want to pick them up in the con- in the comment section go ahead just little tidbits here next thing that i saw trending and a lot of people making videos about was the argument and the issue of digital versus physical. Now, I am always going to be on the side of physical, even though much of my library, the vast majority of my library, is digital, specifically on Steam. I'm with you guys on the physical side. Uh, And that is for more reasons than just gaming. I do believe that as we shift further and further away from physical, and the fact that you don't technically own or you don't permanently own what you have digitally, uh, it's just going to lead to trouble. I don't know how. I don't know when. Well, I do know how, but we don't have to get into that in this video. (laughs) I don't know when exactly, but I like ownership of things, and video games just happen to be something that aren't at the top of my priorities, so I guess it's not the end of the world if I happen to lose my digital video game collection. You know, it'd be a lot of money wasted and down the drain, but... There are certainly worse things than that. So digital versus physical, I'm not going to do a full video on that because it's being talked to death. I'm just going to stay uh, state where my allegiance lies. Next, the console wars and acquisitions. It's so funny to me how this pops up year after year after year. Like people just haven't moved on from, well, I just use this phrase, but pledging their allegiance to one company over another. I don't even know, uh, okay, I do know his name, Phil Spencer, right, the CEO of Xbox and the guy who does all these uh, media appearances on stage. He loves himself, clearly, nothing wrong with that. Uh, <laughs> I'm on video right now, I love myself. But, uh, you know, like, do do we still have Phil Spencer fanboys? Is that what fuels the console war? No, I don't think so. I actually think a lot of the people who inig- initially took part in the console wars, who were kind of like me when I was a teenager, We've moved on, and much of what you see online 
is manufactured. It is to drum up excitement. It is to drum up more sales, ultimately, to make more money for these companies. So I see people making videos about the console wars. I would say don't take them too seriously. Console wars, while they do exist, they are very much a relic of the past. And a lot of what you do see online today on the Twitters and the X's and the other forms of social media, they're manufactured, they're artificial, they're created by the companies so that people will talk about them after they start trending. Now, as for acquisitions and Xbox and Microsoft acquiring more studios versus Sony acquiring more studios, is it always good? Is it always bad? People tend to think it's pretty bad for competition and they want a lot of these smaller developing studios spread out. Uh, that is an economical discussion for another time because you really cannot prevent a lot of companies from monopolizing the smaller manufacturers or developers across all industries unless you have a lot of laws and regulations in place to prevent that sort of thing. Um, and we see in Canada with the telecom companies, for example, that the government is not interested in limiting the scope of their power and their scale because the government is hand in hand with them in so many different business ventures and there's money to be made in both directions. So I'm not saying it's as corrupt as that in the gaming sphere, uh, but what you're seeing in gaming is also the natural outcome in many ways of the free market, not just the actual free market, but the free market that we live in that is very much dictated and ruled by a small set of people who had a head start on it being free. And anyways, I don't need to get into capitalism and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's an interesting conversation, too, if you look at certain aspects of it. Uh, this whole thing about acquisitions, I guess what's my uh, stance on it? It's just that it's inevitable, and we have to deal with it. And if you don't like anything in the gaming sphere or in the gaming realm or by these gaming companies, I've said it before, but I will state it even more confidently and proudly and loudly, is speak with your wallet. And if that means you don't like the direction that Microsoft is heading in, then quit buying Game Pass, quit subscribing to them, quit buying Microsoft's games and consoles, or it could be Sony, or it could be Nintendo, or Steam, or whoever. Your wallet is the most powerful thing that you own, and it's the only thing that these companies listen to. Even when you think that there's some sort of protest, or some group is being really vocal about something that they want, or representation, or their positions within a company, whatever it may be, there's always this underlying issue about the money. It may not be talked about, it may not be brought to the forefront, but money is what's most important right there. So I'll just leave it at that. Last thing we can talk about here for the trending topics of the last few months, Nintendo Directs. I really don't have that much to say about these. I guess kind of like console wars. It's just funny seeing how many people are into the Nintendo Directs. And don't get me wrong, it is a nice, concise way of getting a lot of your upcoming game information. So I happened to be browsing through the last uh, Nintendo Direct on two times speed uh, a week or so after it released. I got to see the trailer for the new Vel Zelda game that looked really cool. Uh, I see that I'm not really done buying Switch games yet. Nintendo still wants to milk a little more money out of me. And only because I've come this far with my collection, it's a little bit of a sunken ca cost fallacy, I suppose, with my Switch. I think I'll see it through to the end with Metroid Prime 4, for example, and that new Zelda game. God, I really just want to stop buying Nintendo games, but I'm almost there. <laughs> a few more to go. Anyways, Nintendo Directs, it's funny how many people are into them and how it always creates this big Twitter storm. But it goes back to content and marketing and people using Nintendo Directs to promote themselves and to grow their own channels. It's reaction videos en masse, which... I cannot be bothered to watch any of, but again, that's just the shape of that particular landscape. Much like how the gaming developers have their own landscape, which I've touched on a few times already, the YouTube scene is full of that sort of um, crafted and very specific and particular look. And we can get into that a little bit more here as I move off of the trendy topics and just get into some popular content and talking about that on YouTube. So... I was talking to my buddy a few hours ago today 
and we were exchanging videos and channels that we both like and sharing some stuff with each other that we would like to see more of. And then we shared some examples with each other about videos that we're just kind of tired of seeing. So let me get my bullet points out of the way here and then maybe I can tackle them in more detail. I have seen so much mass-produced content, lazy content, people talking about the algorithm, uh, people talking about upload frequency, but people don't talk about the advertisers. And so, you know, with my channel, and to bring this back full circle to the start of the video, I've wanted to upload consistently because it apparently does better with the algorithm, and it does a better job of bringing new people to your channel. But why does that matter? Why should it actually matter? If you have good content, and I'm not claiming that I do, but I think I do, if you have good content, hypothetically speaking, why does anyone really care whether you upload it once a month, once every two months, once every six months, or not even with any kind of uh, rhyme or reason or pattern? Maybe you do one video one year, and you have three videos the next year, and then two the year after. It could be completely random. If you're subscribed to that channel, you like what they do, whether they do it frequently or not, right? Well, this big push for people to uh, upload consistency, uh, consistently, I'm messing that word up again. And when you see these tip videos by YouTubers telling you how to grow and what you can do to make your channel a bigger success, you have to be consistent in your uploads. YouTube favors consistent uploaders because they are just the best possible way for YouTube to make more money off of advertisers. Why would an advertiser want to back a channel, for example, that uploads infrequently? Once a year, one year, and then six times the next year. No, the advertisers want their ads on the channels where there are weekly videos, and maybe even more than that. And it's funny how that advertising and money-making strategy has trickled down to the least successful YouTube creators and all the small channels are telling each other and you know they're doing it usually out of the goodness of their hearts and how to actually help each other you gotta upload consistently you gotta upload consistently but again I don't think people really care because there's so much content available so much good content is available that even if you don't get a uh, video notification in your inbox from me one week, you're probably going to get some video notifications from the other channels that you're into. It's just about money in the bottom line. And in particular, the advertisers. Like I said, people don't talk about the advertisers, but they play a big role in why people talk about upload consistency. Anyways, is there anything else from that that I should really talk about? Oh, the mass-produced content, lazy content. I mean, yeah, bad content is bad content. I can't exactly decipher why some bad content also goes viral. It could lead into uh, the ability of bad content to be easily mass produced. And so maybe YouTube is telling people, uh, hey, you should make this cheaper, easier to make and quicker to make content. Don't worry about those long video productions. I mean, there's benefits to both. You can slap some longer ads on the longer videos. Anyways, I think I've pretty much covered that as it pertains to gaming. And so how can we wrap up over here? How can I sign off? I think I've pretty much covered everything. I've talked for a long time. This is going to be a long behind the scenes video, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you enjoyed me rambling about these different topics. This is in some ways a food for thought video on its own. Uh, and hopefully you've appreciated or if you've been wondering, now you have some clarity about the channel and what's been going on and what's to come. I have tons of video ideas still. I just need more time dedicated to making the videos. So many of you know exactly what that's like. Hopefully uh, you don't mind now that I'm not the most consistent uploader. My best like I could strive to do is for three uploads per month. I'm gonna try to get back on that, but boy, I gotta play a lot of games, I gotta catch up. So that is it for now. I will sign off, I will say goodbye. I'm gonna go grab Leo just so I can use him for the thumbnail, <laughs> okay? Thanks everybody for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, good boy.